thank you all so much for staying here with us on this channel. And these are one of those very rare privileges. Um, you can see the legend standing next to me, and I don't need to say much. But of course, this is somebody I used to watch when I was a little boy and I was growing up in my formative years. He is the man who brought great hope to Ghana through the stage of boxing. And of course, a man of Ghanaian skin going out there to conquer opponent upon opponent and making major statements about the quality that we have here as a Ghanaian people, not only in sport. And after all of that, and after all these years of having a sterling career, he has received massive acclaim and massive recognition for it. One of them by the WBC, which has named him as the greatest super featherweight of all time. This, plus his naming as the first African to be inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, is one thing that we should all be very proud of. Today, we are remembering a man of great skin who contributed a great deal to the realization of the man who has now become Africa's greatest boxer of all time. Azuma Zoom Zoom Nelson, the professor, the Berema, helps me to remember the life and times of President Jerry John Rawlings through the platform of boxing. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on this conversation. Uh, you look good as always, like I said. <laughs> but what have you been doing, I mean, to remain in shape like this? See, when you have a God, you always have to look good. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, you made a very big revelation when um, former President Rawlings passed on. Um, it was difficult and it was a major struggle from my end uh, trying to get you to speak. I mean, you only wrote a statement, but I could feel your pain because of what you wrote in that statement. So let's go back to it. Um, President Rawlings made major sacrifices for you during your formative years as a, as a, as a boxer, and that is what has shaped you. Yeah. Can you take us back to those moments? Yes, of course. You know, um, when we were young, mm. you know, I like discipline, so I want to be a soldier. You know? And um, one time, Rollins was um, our manager. I see. When we were amateurs. I see. You know? Yes. So sometimes it's even difficult for us to get food to eat after training. I see. You know? And this man, after training, he come and clean our room. President Rollins used to clean your rooms for you. Yes, you I know, see. and we don't want him to do. So no, no, I say no, 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 no. People are tired, so you have to rest, you know. And he come and clean the room, and then sometimes the something to eat is difficult. So sometimes he go and bring some uh, beans and uh, uh, tatami and plantain. Yeah. You know, and then we eat. You know, and you know, we get what's what we call red red, red red, or some know. of them also call it kope or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, that's what uh, he was doing mm -hmm. for us, and uh, I told him I want to be a military man. I want to join the army. You know, a lot of us mm -hmm. want to join the army, and he he agreed for the for other ones, and he, yeah, he, he said, no, I shouldn't join the army, but what he's seeing in me is bigger than army. I see. Yes, you know. So today, as I am right now sitting down here, and, uh, I can say Rollins is, is my prophet. I see. You know? I see. Yeah. So when he told you not to pursue the, the um, ambition for the military, what, how, what was your reaction? Did you just take it immediately or you, you were reluctant? I was thinking about it, why, yeah. you know. And, uh, but when he said that uh, what I'm seeing in you oh. is bigger than military, you know, it cools me down and I was thinking, you know, what is bigger than military? You know, not knowing military, when you enter into the military, you cannot be, you cannot turn professional, mm. you know. So, I yes, so if I join the military, you you know, have I cannot be, I cannot turn professional. I and and uh, like I said, uh, nah, nobody will even know who's as someone else. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Let's now talk about the, this Gary and Bean story. I'm more interested in it as well. Because <laughs> um, when I was growing up, I used to hear stories that President Rawlings owed Gary and Bean sellers, you know, some Gary and Bean yeah. sellers, because he used to go and buy it on credit. 
when when did you find out that apparently it was that same Gary and Beans that was being referred to that was the one that was brought to you? You know, it's not once. Mm. You know, um, most of the time, you know, when we finish training, you know, he brings <laughs> he brings the red, he brings the red, red. We, we are young guys, we don't know where he, he, brought, he brought it from, you know, yeah. but hey, we have to eat. You know, so later on, later on, when I, I, I read, I heard that uh, um, uh, he would been borrowing uh, uh, wholesome people yeah. with uh, that bow, the sellers of the, the, sellers of the, the uh, red, red, and yeah. he, he didn't pay, you know. So, <laughs> so, but then I realized that, oh, okay. So the the red, red that he been bought, buying for us. It's not pay, he didn't pay, mm, mm. <laughs> you know, we don't, we, we don't know, uh, mm. but... Uh, times were hard. Times were hard, yes, times mm. were hard, you know, mm. so, I um, mean, uh, it's not like today. Yes, today I just, um, I, I just, I just ask the people, how, how much are we going to cost? And I just uh, go and pay, yeah. you know, but, you know, it's one of those things. Prof, um, in, your, in your biography, The Professor, um, written by Ashley Morrison, you, you spoke about how President Rawlings used to call you sometimes before your fights. You'd have conversations with you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. oh sometimes when the fight, you know, sometimes some fights are very difficult. Yeah. Especially when uh, I fought uh, uh, this guy from Australia, mm. Jeff Fennec. Yeah. You know, when I fought him the first fight, the way the fight went, you know, um, everybody was everybody was scared. Yeah. How was it like um, having the head of state only a phone call away mm. when you were going to represent the whole nation? I mean, this was the head of state. People from other countries had to book appointments to see him and all of that. And this man was just a phone call away from you. What? How? How unique was that feeling for you? You know. Um, he, he's like my father, he's like my, 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 my brother, you know, and if you are going to call your father, I mean, you don't have to be scared. If you're going to yeah. call your brother, you don't have to be scared, you know. Yeah. But I have a lot of respect for him, you know, because the way he's with me, you know, I know he loves me so much and he cares, he cares for me. So um, I, I care for him and uh, he gave me more encouragement, more faith when I enter into the ring. You know, I know that uh, he's sitting down there watching me, you know, and I cannot disgrace him. If I, to, to disgrace him, I have to, I have to die. Wow, wow. Uh, Prof, you, you spoke about the difficulty um, when he passed on. This was just a year ago. Um, where were you when you got the news, first of all? I can remember. I can remember, but uh, I, 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 I met him, okay. like, you know, we went to the mother's funeral. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We went to the mother's funeral. So when we are on the way, we, we pass his house yeah. at the, uh, his hometown. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So uh, me, uh, uh, him, and the children, and some people, you know, few two or three people gathered, you know, so we sat down at that. We ate together, you know, I think, I remember we ate rice and the king king or something, you know. So after so we finished, we continued, we came home, you know, then. So that was the last time the last that you, time you saw him? We, yeah, we, I saw him. We, okay. do, do, you remember, do you remember the last thing that he said to you? The, la the very last thing he said to you? Uh, I have to think about it. Sure, you know, sure. Because, uh, now, um, so once again, how did you receive the news? How did you get the information that he had passed on? You know, uh, before that, mm. uh, three months before that, before that, I I met him. You know, we went someplace, and then um, when I met him, I saw the shirt that he wore. Mm. Uh, there's, there's a medical something in it. Like an equipment or like a, know, a device? Yeah, yes. A medical it. device. Yes, okay. so uh, I asked him, what what's wrong? wrong? 
and he said he's not feeling well. And I said, oh, we're praying it will be well. Uh, so about three months later, mm. I, I, read, I heard that uh, he's, not feeling, he's not feeling well. They took him to uh, some, uh, I don't know what that, 37 military, 37 military oh. and, uh, you know, before I had, so he passed away. Wow. You know, and God says that uh, may God give him rest. Were you able to go view his body? Uh, no. No, no, no. I, in the funeral. Yes. Yes. I went. I went. Yeah. I was in the funeral. You know, mm. with the family. You know, and mm. I, because I'm like a family man. Mm. You know, I'm like a family. Man. Must have been very, very tough. Yes, yeah, so uh, we went to we went around and I gave what, my last what respect. Run, yeah, what, what ran through your mind as you walked around and paid your last respects? I mean, considering the kind of relationship, the bond that the two of you had, and the kind of impact that he made on your career, just like you had said in your 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 yeah. book. You know, this word, I I, I know that. Uh, Everybody will go the same place, you know. But like for me, I wish he would stay for a while, you know, so that uh, we can keep seeing each other. Yeah. You know. But I know that God time is the best, you know. God called him, and I say, may he rest in peace. You know? So uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have too much to say. Yeah. Because uh, you don't have the power. Because if somebody died, you, you know, you can you can buy him with money. You can buy the you can buy him with the money, or you can call him with the money because you have money. I, I mean, if you have to pay, then I believe I mean even a lot of people are ready to pay for him to come back because he's a good person. Wow. Uh, we're wrapping it up, uh, Prof. But um, uh, there, I've heard a few people make suggestions that. Uh, you know, boxing or the boxing fraternity have to do something um, significant to, to honor his memory. I don't know what you also think about it. It was, it was, it was something we have to do. Yeah. You know, so uh, we, we, we're going to gather the people and see, you know, what, uh, what we can do, you know, to, to prove to him that uh, we really love him. Prof. Thank you so much. It's Thank always you. a pleasure. Uh, I'm grateful for Thank the time, you. always. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. So uh, that was Professor Berima Azuma Zumzum Nelson, one of the greatest sportsmen ever to have come from the African continent, um, an inductee of the International Boxing Hall of Fame, and uh, the man who has been named by the WBC as, as one of the only two uh, best super featherweights of all time. He has been recollecting his moments with uh, former President Rawlings, and the impact that he made on his career uh, as he traveled a very, very calculated path to dominance in the world of boxing.